It's been said, you are what you eat. And that's somewhat accurate. It's more accurate to say, you are what you absorb. And most accurate yet to say, you are what you don't eliminate. And for a lot of people, that means big problems. Hi, I'm Dr. Bob Rakowski. Welcome to this week's MoveNat Healthy Lifestyle Tip number two, Poop and Eliminate Right which of course deals with the problem of detoxification. So how big is this problem of toxins or detoxification? Well, according to the World Health Organization, one-fourth of all illness on the planet is related to toxicity. If we look at the symptoms of chronic poisoning as published in the journal Clinical Chemistry, these include fatigue, sleep disturbance, intestinal distress, allergy symptoms, headaches, confusion, and anxiety. I've said for years, if people didn't have these problems, I'd probably have to do something else for a living because this is what people walk into my office complaining of. The National U.S. Childhood Health Study shows that toxins are related to about $55 billion a year worth of health problems for children. Now, the Environmental Protection Agency of the U.S. has been monitoring human toxins since 1972. They've done a number of biopsies of body fat after surgery and body fat from cadavers. And they've come to the conclusion that 100% of the population stores toxins in their tissue. And in fact, most environmental toxins are fat soluble and our bodies have to convert those to a water soluble form to eliminate them. This is the job of the liver and it works together with the kidneys. The Environmental Working Group looked at umbilical cord blood of newborn infants. They found that every infant that they looked at had over 200 toxins in their system at the moment of birth. Now keep in mind they can only test for about 7% of toxins so this number probably is 3,000 or even more. National Geographic wrote an article years ago called The Toxins Within and they concluded that every man, woman, child, plant, and animal species today is intoxicated with numerous toxins. Now, what are some of the problems that we can see with this intoxication? One of the biggest issues is actually the obesity pandemic. We know that these toxins disrupt the hormonal systems of the body. We know that all toxins inhibit mitochondrial function, which means that humans make less energy. And if they make less energy, they use less energy, burn less energy, and store more energy, usually in the term, in the form of body fat. If we look at the organs of detoxification, we have the skin, we have the lungs, we have the liver, we have the kidneys, and we have the bowel. So what do we do about this toxic problem? Well, the number one rule is to actually separate yourself from the toxic source. The Environmental Protection Agency says that indoor air has many more toxins than outdoor air. And in fact, we know that plants serve as air purifiers. So wouldn't it make sense that we want to spend as much time outdoors as possible and as much time with nature around as many plants as we can get? Item number two is move. When we look at the skin and the lungs, when we move ideally, we breathe more deeply. Right? It's by necessity. And in fact, we'll have a, a section on breathing, but we should breathe deep into our belly, deep diaphragmatic breathing. That'll allow our lungs to oxygenate more and blow off more toxins. By moving intensely, we'll also sweat. And we know that the skin is the largest excretory organ. When we look at the kidneys, the kidneys require that we drink clean water, clean teas, and clean coffee. There's over a thousand studies on the anti-cancer benefits of green tea, which I think most people know is quite good. But surprisingly, coffee has proven health benefits. The New England Journal of Medicine published a meta-analysis in May of last year with over 5 million years of people follow-up, and they found out that people that drank the most coffee had the lowest rates of death. So we want to drink clean coffee, organic coffee. Finally, when we look at the bowel and the liver, we want nutrient-dense foods. The bowel functions based on fiber from good foods, 
water, which we can drink or have in vegetables, and neurologic tone. And that requires consistent activation of the reflexes. I like magnesium citrate to enhance uh, water content of the bowel to facilitate bowel function, as well as adding good, clean, healthy fibers. When we look at liver detoxification, it is nutrient dependent, and it is energy dependent, and it is protein dependent. So fasting is not the best mechanism to enhance liver detoxification. In fact, it slows down liver detoxification. I like modified fasts that utilize medical foods proven to enhance detoxification. All of these topics can be expanded on future lifestyle blogs. I hope all your efforts bring you health, happiness, and success. I'm Dr. Bob Rakowski.